<laughs> Morning, okay, everyone. So our next presentation is Pam Miller using Blackboard to assist least uh, a least ability class. Thank you, Pam. Hi, good morning. I have three different jobs. I'm a part-time worker, three places. One place is I work in the textbook business and I create videos to do the exercises in the computer textbook. So I have experience in creating videos. Right, okay. Um, I have... I teach postgraduate certificate in education at Mowbray Campus. The students come to us from different places. Some of them come from CPUT, different faculties, different skills. Some come from places like Rhodes. Some come from colleges. They come to us with different skills. They have the correct NQF level, but that's Different backgrounds, engineering. You have an engineering lecture person in your class with somebody who's on another course and actually can't use the computer at all. So we have this huge mixed ability and I'm, I have to teach them. And my job, I don't know how to use this. Oh. My job is to teach ICT for higher education. And I see that mainly as writing an essay or report and doing citations and bibliography. And then I'm also teaching ICT for teachers. So I have two different focuses. Makes life very interesting when you have people from different, ab different backgrounds with different abilities. Now the class that I have is a huge class, 193 students. We ha I have them over four different sessions, and they're big classes. They're not divided on ability. So in any class of about 50 students, I have some... can hardly use a m m mouse. And those who have a lot of a great ICT background. And trying to teach that together is quite a challenge. The class is in the late afternoon when it can be very cold. Trains not working. Taxis a problem. They don't all come in at the same time, which causes its own problems. The year is quite short because our teaching year is divided up into teaching practice and lectures. So I have a short space of time to teach things that I think are important. That's ICT for higher education and ICT for teachers. Okay. I, after some time, I've, I've, I've redesigned the whole syllabus, curriculum, whatever <coughs> you want to call it. And I've decided now that I will do Word for 30% of the marks. Because the word's important. And I will do Excel for marks. Excel for, for marks for the classroom. That's important for 30% of the marks. And that work, they all do the same work and they all write the same exam. Okay. Then we have portfolios and they choose which portfolios they wish to do. And that is in their own time and that counts 40% of the marks. I'm telling you this because the way I teach these things and use Blackboard for these things differs. I love Blackboard. I use Blackboards for quizzes on Word. I did a Get Smarter course. I did a couple of Get Smarter courses. And I never thought that I could ever have a Word exam that was marked automatically. Then I started working for the Computer Olympiad, where I now, my specialization is creating the word exam for the Computer Olympiad, and it marks automatically. So the students do quizzes to practice on Blackboard. 
And they also do final summative quizzes on Blackboard. Can you imagine doing a table of contents, cover page, bibliography, as quiz? It works. Blackboard I also use as a repository for all my instructions and videos. But videos are also put on YouTube because sometimes one doesn't want to work, so I have them on both places. Blackboard is also useful because it displays all their marks. And I'm not sure if you've ever gone into the mark system where you can arrange how the marks are displayed for the students. Blackboard's useful because you can get it on campus and off campus. Blackboard's also useful because what is on Blackboard can be displayed on a big screen. And students can sit in front of the screen and argue and talk. Okay, now my word. When I teach word, beginning of the year, I stand and I demonstrate the other projector, palm point, show them. I teach styles, headings, table of contents. I also provide videos on how to do styles, table of contents, insert a cover page, how to do bibliography citations. So I have the two things. One is me demonstrating in class for those who are there, and then videos to support people. I then have students do a practice online test of those things. And then we do a formal summative test. And the marks are immediately available. They're practicing their own time. And for me, it's very satisfying to see students after hours working on Blackboard on their quizzes. I haven't bothered to monitor who's using the videos. Now, the portfolios. Portfolios is where the students choose what they want to do. They've got to choose five. They have a, I have a whole range of them. They pretty much teach themselves, but I've got the videos. I have instructions and videos on how to do them. <coughs> what are they? Create a quiz using HTML. Let the students have a video on instructions and video. How to create a digital CV blog, instructions and video. How to create your own YouTube channel, and they've got to make and upload two videos. And they choose which ones they want to do. But the instructions and videos on how to do them are on Blackboard. I love this repository that we have. Some other portfolio topics. Creating Google Forms. How to send a prop, an email with a proper signature and how to lay out an email. How to write a report. But this isn't the important thing for me. It's important. What I've been doing at the moment with the students, we're coming to the end of the year. The class is kind of settled on. Finished teaching prac, they're going into schools in January. So now we're working with Excel. Because they've got to be able to do marks. The way I've taught it, I provide exercises with instructions in the exercise that come from the textbook that I'm involved with. They then have videos on how to do that exercise. The videos are on Blackboard and on YouTube. They have quite a few exercises. But they are also quizzes with each of the exercises. So although I don't watch that exercise, I don't mark it, I have a quiz on that one to see if they have the <coughs> correct formula in cell C7 correct answer, and other things like that. Now, what's been happening in class these last two weeks is actually wonderful. Here we have students are working together. Exercise, 
There was one student there, top one, and this one here. But this one over here is working with the person, so he's working with between two, between two screens. I call it warm wear. Students work best with somebody else, particularly if they are a little bit scared, apprehensive. Here we have students, and I'm not sure if you can see very well. Over here, we have <coughs> earphones. They're listening to a video. But they're doing it together, supporting each other. Here we have... The, this lady has a video that's on Blackboard. That video there is on YouTube. The videos show exactly how to do the exercise. And you can see on this one over here, this, this person has got the sound on, and I've got the text, they're explaining what's going on. Then, Blackboard is also useful. It's on the internet. It's on the network at the university. But you can bring your own laptop, and then you can swear at it because it's not working properly. <laughs> but I find that having <coughs> something like a, a learner management system like Blackboard, which has got so many options, is so wonderful. I use the quizzes. I let them students see their grades, their marks, and I use the repository to put my instructions and my videos. Questions? This is developed, this, this system of mine is developed over the last four or five years, and at the moment it's working. The students who are late for class, they know what they have to do. It's there. Those who are absent, it's there. Because they, they have quizzes, I can check who's done the work. Because the quiz marks are on Blackboard. So Blackboard <coughs> is it's there to help, but it's also there to monitor the student's learning. Yes, I'm a bit deaf, so I speak very loudly. Uh, I love this new video clips. The, the, the video clips are maximum five minutes. And they use these sponges for those quizzes. Yes. Yes. Maybe you just mentioned that I missed it because I was late. Um, apologies for that. I couldn't hear. Um, I said I, I might have missed this because I was a little late, but uh, class attendance, is that, how is this, is that affected? Class attendance depends on the weather, on taxis, on trains, on work for other lecturers. Um, if the students choose not to come to class, that's their problem. Oh, sorry, I should have started off this talk. So the start of this talk was something I saw on Facebook from computer teachers in schools. Teacher was getting agitated because the teacher stands in front of the class telling the students exactly what to do. The whole class has got to do something at the same time. And they've got to work at the speed of the slower student. And they have to do that because they have to get the students passing. I will help the students to pass. The students want to come to class, the work is there. They want to stay at home, the work is there. But the work is there. If they choose not to work, I have a record of what they've done. Does that answer your question? So, so these are mostly adult learners? Adult learners or? These, um, the PGCE students, all, they all have a qualification. And I actually, it, it was so wonderful watching the students in class this last week, with two weeks while they're working on Excel. It is so nice seeing them working with each other. I also have picked up that 
some of the portfolio items where I have the instructions and video that they work in the reses together. Having it there to share is what's important. Yes? I know how difficult it is to, for many of our schools to even think about having any forms of technology. But are you encouraging your students to think about the tools that they're learning and using, how they could possibly use in their own teaching as well? Yes and no. Because the videos, uh, so in minor, at the beginning of the year, they had to make videos. They had to make a YouTube channel and they had to create a video of them reading a book to someone and then how to lock a computer screen. And they had to upload it to YouTube. And I kind of gave them a lecture on the fact that our children want to hear their own accents, they want their own culture. Please make videos. And the students got that. Uh, we then need data projectors that work in schools. The videos that I've made for the computer skills, they go, it's a DVD with a textbook that we make. Schools, people who go to schools doing teaching prep have reported back to me that the videos are not available at the schools. The Western Cape Education Department have bought those textbooks for the schools. The teachers take the DVDs, the CDs out of the textbooks and put them somewhere safe. So they're not watching my videos, but the students that I've seen, all the CAT students, and I show them where all the videos are available on YouTube. So although they may not get the CD, they can download the videos from YouTube. Um, I'm trying to help. You can do, you can do so much. Yeah. Last I was, question. I was, I was just thinking about, um, you know, perhaps using cell phones. I don't know how many, um, uh, you know, I'm out of touch with how many children at schools have cell phones and what sort of cell phones they use. But I was just thinking that perhaps... Well, I, I did teach at a school down... I did teach at a school um, where they watched my videos on their cell phones. It's so nice to be able to help. Thank you.